I'll get to that. I'll get to that. I'll do that in a minute. I'm doing my thing first and I'm going to do what you want me to do in a minute. Just in a minute. Hey there. Welcome back to Carlin Conversations. I am Tabitha Phelan. Um, this morning I'm just kind of pondering something that happened in my house and, um, yeah, it's morning. Sorry. <laughs> I haven't finished my first cup of coffee. I haven't washed my face. So I am very bleary eyed, but, um, I dropped the boys off and, uh, I knew I needed to spend some time with you. So I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about something that happened this morning and I'm, and I know God's trying to teach me something through it. So I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to talk through it with you. Okay. So this morning we're, you know, we have our very routine mornings and I told the only the two boys, only two of my boys were going, I was taking to school because the two girls have the flu and the other one goes to college. So anyway, blah, 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 blah. So two boys going to school this morning and I tell them, Hey, your lunch boxes are ready and you need to get your water bottle. I'm going to change clothes and we're leaving. Okay. I go change clothes. I come back. They're sitting in the exact same spot where I left them. I'm like, dudes, I told you, grab your lunch boxes, get your water bottles. Let's go. Well, you didn't tell us to grab our lunch boxes. What? Yes, I did. I said, your lunch boxes are ready. Get your water bottles. Let's go. Well, you didn't, you weren't specific. You didn't tell us that we needed to get our lunch boxes. I'm sorry. I thought you realized that every day you eat lunch and you need to take a lunch box if you're going to not eat cafeteria lunch because, I mean, it just makes sense. It makes sense to me, right? Does it make sense to you? It makes sense. I didn't know I had to be like, hey, guys, you, your lunchbox is ready. Now I want you to walk into the kitchen and pick it up and and take it to school. And at lunchtime, you're going to open it and eat what's inside. I didn't know I had to be. They're 15, 17. <laughs> Eight honor roll students. I I thought we had gotten to this point where I didn't have to. <laughs> so, um, we get, you know, I'm trying to get them out the door and they're like, well, you had an earbud in and I just, I couldn't really hear you. And they're making all these excuses. And I'm like, father, God, help me parent these kids without losing my mind. And I realized how often does God tell me to do something and I think about doing it <laughs> or maybe I'm not completely and totally listening and I hear it and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. I'll do that in a minute. I'm doing my thing first and I'm going to do what you want me to do in a minute, just in a minute. Um, how often do I do that with God and how often am I, does he give me something to do? And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? You weren't specific. I, I thought I could do this part and not do that part or, you know, and then I think about Abram. Was he Abraham at that point or was he still Abram? When God said, I want you to go into this land that you do not know where you're going. And he said, okay, God. And he packed up his stuff. And I mean, he was living there with his family. So he like, it wasn't an easy departure. You're leaving everything you've ever known and you're going someplace you don't know. <laughs> a little, a little bit more faith than I've got. So <laughs> a whole lot. He had a whole lot more faith than I've got because that would scare the pants off of me. Anyway, just, um, just kind of thinking that maybe, maybe parenting is supposed to teach us 
more about God than anything because these kiddos, I, I swear, they, um, on a daily basis, I'm like, I feel like God is saying, you see what I have to deal with? <laughs> but God's not, I don't know. Is God sarcastic? You know, there were some places in the Bible where, um, I learned that Jesus was actually kind of snarky. Like the instructions when he said, um, you know, if a man asks you to, well, no, that's not it. <laughs> Insert coffee here. No, when the Roman soldiers, whenever they said, you know, if, if, if he slaps you on one side, then offer him the other cheek as well. Well, that was actually Jesus being snarky a little bit because a Roman soldier would want a backhand to show power, but wouldn't want to do the palm because that would be considered like inferior. So that was Jesus' way of saying, okay, yeah, he wants to hit you. Give him the other side too, because that was a little bit. Anyway, uh, we're getting off topic here. And yeah, um, but God is so good to me. And even though when he tells me to do something and I'm like, well, you weren't specific, God, and I got it started, but I didn't finish it. And he gives me more time. Now, will he always continue to do that? I, I don't believe he will. I think there are times when he gives us something to do. And if we don't do it, that goes to someone else because it's like an Esther when she is like, I can't go to the king and ask him, you know, to, to, to save my people. And Mordecai says, well, if you don't do it, God will raise someone else up who will. And I think I've, I've pondered this many, many times. I think that is God's great mercy. Um, because he knows what he needs done and he gives us an opportunity to participate in his plan. But if we are stubborn, <laughs> stubborn, if we are stubborn and, and resistant, or if we are distracted and we're like, not me, God, somebody else, not me. Um, then we miss out on that blessing. And he passes that blessing on to someone else. For instance, Moses. Moses is like, oh, God, I'm slow to speak. I need someone to speak for you through me. Or what? How did? So God appointed Aaron to be Moses' voice. How much more of a blessing would it have been to Moses if he had a trusted God? And spoken as God instructed him to. I don't. Okay. Call me selfish. But I don't want to miss out on those blessings. It's stressful. It's totally stressful to do what God wants you to do. When he wants you to do it. And not procrastinate. And you got a million other, other things to do. And you think that those things are important too. And then you're having to shuffle. And. But I don't want to. I don't want to push God off so much that I miss out on a blessing and that he has to go to someone else to get it done. So maybe today, instead of being so focused on my agenda and distracted by earbuds or what, excuse me, whatever, I need water. Maybe instead, um, I should say, okay, God, I'm going to do what you asked me to do. It's going to totally disrupt my day. My to-do list is going to be shocked. But okay. Okay. I'll do what you asked me to do when you ask me to do it. Is God asking you to do something today? Has he said, hey, your lunchbox is ready. Get your water bottle. Let's go. 
and you've been busy doing other things and now you're making excuses like, well, God, you weren't specific. Don't miss out on whatever that blessing is, what, whatever way he wants to use you. I mean, he's going to surprise you. You're going to think, oh, you can't use me that way. And he's going to be like, oh, but wait. <laughs> and that's the blessing. That's the blessing. It's thinking we are not able. And then seeing him do it through us. And we're like, that was so God. You know, I believe in you. I think you can get her done. <laughs> Sorry, Southern. I believe you can do anything God asks you to do. So have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your car line and I'll see you tomorrow.